Abba Yahuwah, I just want to praise you and I want to thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for what you have already done in this time as we have gathered together around your table and breaking bread and that which you have done for us. Wow, Father, I thank you that those scrolls over our lives that needed to be opened, that needed to be thrust forth, where we needed to be thrust forth into the fullness of that which you have ordained. I thank you, Father, that we will walk it out, that you will take us by the hand and let us walk it out step by step, not by our might, not by our power, but by your leading of your Ruach HaKodesh. I thank you, Father, for your word. Your word has power and your word is alive and your word comes to nourish us and it comes to separate the bone from the marrow but it nourishes everything that we need in order to be able to go forth and Father, Shabbat is about a time that we can come and we can just feast on your word for you to be able to come and quicken our minds, quicken our lives with your word, that it will become the very leading, because your word is a lamp unto our feet. And so as your word comes forth, I pray that it becomes the lamp that needs to lead our feet in the direction that you have for us to go. And so Abba, my Father, I praise you and I thank you, Father. I thank you for everything that you are doing in this hour. I thank you that you alone are worthy to be praised and that you come, Father, and you speak to my mind, speak through my lips, the very oracles that will come from your heart. And I thank you, Father, that you alone are worthy to be praised. This is not about man. This is about you. This is your word. And your word will do what it says it will do. All we need to do is open ourselves up, surrender our hearts, surrender our minds, surrender our will, surrender our emotions, and allow you to lead us. Father, we are in this time, in this era of the Ruach of Yahuwah, where you're wanting to be able to come and more and more indwell our very being so that we can be able to become those that are led by you, that move as you move, and that we will become less. The things of this world will grow strangely dim as we focus more and more on your heavenly realm and that which you have to show us. And so, Abba, my Father, I thank you that you alone will be able to come reveal your scriptures to us today and lead us let your ruach lead us in what it is that you have for us to be able to to know and to take away with us to be able to not just know it in our knowing but that we will walk it out and I praise and I thank you for this in your Yeshua's name Amen praise Abba Father Today we are going to start um, looking a little bit deeper in being able to be led by the Ruach as we've been laying the foundation in the last few weeks. We've laid the foundation of the understanding that the Ruach of Yahuwah has been given us not just for us to be able to have a nice um, feeling in our bodies and not just because we want to be able to have this manifestation, but because the Ruach of Yahuwah has come so that His Word may be able to be embedded in our hearts. The laws from Genesis to Revelation has been written upon the tablets of our hearts so that we may be able to walk it out. Because the Father is wanting us to walk out this word. And that is why the last few weeks we've laid the foundation of the understanding that 
there's this, you know, there's spirit and truth. And we have laid a lot of foundation on truth. Coming back to the truth of the word. And now we need to be able to expound on what the scriptures say, being led by him. So we are going to start in John chapter 16. As we had a look at John chapter 14. And we've had a look at some of the scriptures in John chapter 15. As we were looking at the fact that he's given us the Ruach of Yahuwah. So let us start in John chapter 16. These words I've spoken to you so that you do not stumble. They shall put you out of the congregations, but an hour is coming when everyone who kills you shall think he's rendering service to a Lua. So this is such an important scripture because this scripture is talking to us in the hour that we are about to come into. In the hours of the things that lay ahead of us. Understand something. This was being given to the disciples for the time and the season that they were in. And Yeshua was saying that there's going to be coming those because you're going to speak my words. And as you're going to speak my words, they're going to want to kill you. They're going to want to arrest you. And do you think we are going to be in a different space? We are absolutely in the same space. Because as the disciples were the ones that were going to have to be the ones that were going to have to break ground, they were the pioneers that were going to have to solidify our faith for us. So we are going to be these end time pioneers that need to be able to break ground in order to be able to go forward in being able to prepare the way for the coming of our Messiah and the fact that we are going to be able to prepare the way for our reigning and ruling with him in a millennial reign. In a time of the reign of Messiah. Because when Messiah walked the earth, he didn't try and um, tell us about this kingdom. He was constantly telling us about in his kingdom. And this is what you need to do in order for you to inherit the kingdom. And he talked a lot about his kingdom. And this is the gospel of the kingdom that needs to be shared. Because we need to understand his kingdom. Not our kingdom. Not about what we see going on in this world. We spend so much time trying to build this kingdom. But how much time are we spending on his kingdom? On building where he's building. That's what I say to people. Build where he's building. Because it's about his kingdom. And so we look at chapter 16 when he is saying... These words, now understand, he's busy speaking. This is now when he's sitting and he's sitting and he's speaking to his disciples before he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. When he's at the table with them, having the supper with them. And he's saying, these words, I have spoken to you so that you do not stumble. So understand, the Father needs to give us his words so that we do not stumble. They shall put you out of congregations. <laughs> so there's some places that they're not even going to want to listen to the message that you have to say. They're going to put you out. Because why? If you're going to come with the message of a true gospel, which is this gospel of this kingdom, it's a little bit sometimes foreign to what is being taught us in the mainstream church right now. And so they're going to put you out. You see, it was the same as what was happening then. Remember, the disciples were in a synagogue run by a pharmaceutical religious system. Some of us might sit in a church that's being run by a church system. And this is how it looks and this is how it is. 
And anything that doesn't look like that or sound like that is going to be foreign. But understand, our Messiah is not interested in religion. And that is why we cannot put ourselves back in a pharmaceutical system. We cannot put ourselves in a Nicolaitan system. We have to be able to be those that need to be led by Him. We have to be those that can be free to move as He moves. Now, many times when we are in a system, it's a little bit difficult. Because I have found that, like specifically in a church, it's very difficult because the pastor won't even listen to the prophet. And the prophet might have something to say, but the pastor is not interested in listening to what the prophet has to say. And the fivefold ministry is not even able to operate because it's run by a system. And the father doesn't want a system. The father wants us to be free. That sheep can just be able to hear his word and be free. And this is why he says, They shall put you out of congregations, but an hour is coming when everyone who kills you shall think he's rendering service to a lure. So there are people that will put you down, that are going to want to kill you, that will speak up against you. But what they don't understand, they are coming up against Yahuwah. Because why? They don't recognize his Ruach. They're not led by his Ruach. And it's interesting. Those that are of the Spirit will always kill that which is of the the Ruach. Whether you are in a community, whether you are in in a church system, doesn't matter where you are. If there just happens to be one person that is not led by the Ruach of Yahuwah, that one person is enough to kill the whole thing. Because that person will be able to become a poison that will stand up against that which the Father tries to do. So if the Father says it's white, it will be black. And so it will be. And that is how the division always comes in. The reason why the division comes in is because man allows themselves to go into the flesh. And they don't pray and seek the Father to show them by the Spirit. Because if they were truly to seek the Father and show the, to show them by the Spirit, He would. And so, this is still what the Father said to me yesterday. When He wrote out of my hand and He said, Very soon, a time is coming when man will see what I am doing and what man does very soon very soon man will be able to see what I am about to do because that which the father is about to do no man is going to stand in the way of that because we are in a time now where he's moving very quickly and this they shall do to you because they did not know the father nor me So you see, this is the problem that we will have. If they truly know the Father, now to know the Father and know the Son is exactly what it's going to come in uh, John chapter 17, verse 3. If you turn the page and it says, this is everlasting life, that that they should know you, the only true Allah, and Yahushua Messiah, whom you have sent. And so for you to know Him, You have to have intimacy with him. You can't just say that you know him because you read your Bible or because you go to church and because you say a prayer and because you do these little religious things. To know him is to know him intimately. And you just need to be able to know that you know him to say, so what is the Father saying? Because how many people really know what the Father is saying? Because we are like in a rut kind of a system. I'll make sure that I maybe 
worship a little bit and then I read my Bible a little bit and then I pray a little bit. But where's the time for him to speak? When does he get to speak? When does he get to show? And this is why I'm saying the time has come now that the separation that's taking place between the goats and the sheep and between the sheep and the sheep because now the separation is coming between sheep and sheep. We can see many people do many good works in their flesh. And they do all the good works. But at the end of the day, if they're not truly filled with the Ruach, those good works is not going to sustain them in the days ahead. I can tell you now. That is why you're going to see the greatest falling away. Because when, there's a word, there's a saying that says, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. So, when the going gets tough, those that thought they were tough, are they going to get going with the things of the Father? Or are they, they going to fall by the, fle- by, the, by, the, by the wayside? Because you will soon see them fall by the wayside. Because at the end of the day, there was no foundation in them. If we don't have a foundation... When the storm comes, when the rain comes, when the, it hits against the, 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 the house, will it stand? Let's just go there quickly. Stay, stay with John. Let's just go to um, uh, Matthew chapter 7. I just happened to open up this. Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them, and does them, shall be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now, i tell you something. I have come to understand for us to do... You know, if there's something that the Father is busy revealing to me at the moment and something that I'm really starting to understand, if you are called by Him and you have to be able to do a work for Him, you will have a level of suffering. You are going to have to suffer. You are not going to be spared of suffering, beloveds of the King. And I pray that today, even if I don't get to the fullness of those scriptures, that you must understand that we are called to suffer for his name's sake. And yeah, it's already saying in John chapter 16, you are going to suffer. If I look at my own life, it's very easy for people to want to look at my life and say, oh wow, look and see, you know, and envy. So many people, you know, so many people, it's jealousies and envy. They envy what you have, they envy what you're walking, but they're not prepared to pay the price that you are willing to pay. If people are prepared to pay the price, They also will be used mightily. But you see, to be used mightily comes with a price. Because Yahushua himself had to pay a price. And so there will be hardships that are going to come. The shaking is going to come and the hardships have to come. Because when everything is at our fingertips, it's not always, it's, it's too easy. We have to birth the things that the Father's got for us to birth. And then even when we think we haven't been through enough, this is the place that I was getting to. Father, haven't I gone through enough already? And he obviously thinks not because then the next thing comes my way. And why should I even get disturbed? Why would I even allow it to disturb me? Because at the end of the day, If my Messiah had to endure that, if my Messiah had to go through that, then what makes me think for one minute that I am not going to have to go through that? I have to understand the pain. I have to understand the hurt. I have to understand betrayal. I have to understand all those things in order to be able to walk in his shoes. Which person that truly serves the Father hasn't been betrayed 
by those closest to them. Which person? Because Yeshua was betrayed by Judas Iscariot that was one of his twelve. Who of us think that we're going to be spared of any of that? We are not going to be spared of that. And these things will come in our lives as tests. To test our heart. And the only thing that we can do is just keep humbling, surrendering. And so he says, Therefore anyone who hears these words of mine and does them shall be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain came, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now, I can tell you one thing now. When you have gone through every one of these different tests that you've got to go through, when you have gone through all these different phases that the Father takes us through, then it's this phase, and then it's that phase, then it's a financial phase, then it's going to have to be a, 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 a friendship phase, then it's a this phase, and it's a that phase. All these different phases that He takes us through, because remember, Yeshua faced three tests in the wilderness. The test of self-sufficiency. That was the test of self-sufficiency, which was the test of when, when the, the, they came to Him and they, with the bread. And he says, why don't you turn these rocks into bread because you are hungry? And what did Yeshua say? Man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Father. He didn't take the bait. So the first, one of the very first tests, man, that test can sometimes be the hardest test and it depends on how long it's going to last. And I know that mine lasted many, many, many years. Still facing many Test, self-sufficient provision who's your provider who's the provider are you the provider or is he the provider so if he's the one who says he will provide then you have to surrender and allow him to be the provider and that test is not an easy test why because there's no test that challenges your flesh and your worldly realm <laughs> as, much, as much as that test. Because you have to strip and strip and strip and strip. You have to learn what it means to humble. Where all of a sudden possessions mean nothing to you. Because you've had to let it go. Where all of a sudden earthly possessions don't own you anymore. No dangling carrot can come before you. And then what was the next test that he had to endure? The, the, the test of the spectacular. Wow. Jump from this place. Because if you jump from this place, the angels shall come and catch you. What did he say? Do not put your father to the test. How many times we want to put him to the test with our prayers? That we pray soulish prayers and then we try to test him with it. You've got to understand, he wants humility. He doesn't want arrogance and pride. That's the, that's the devil. The devil will come and give you arrogance and pride. People that will turn around and say, well, you know what, I will just be able to go and take this um, injection or whatever and he's going to protect me. That's arrogance and pride. And many times we, do, we make decisions because of our um, mindsets, of our religious mindsets, but we didn't even seek the Father. We dictated to Him what He must do for us. And we quote Scripture and we quote Scripture and we quote Scripture in verse to Him that He must do what we want. But we didn't even take the time to find out if that's his will. But man, we want to be able to put him to the test now. That he will do this for me and he will do that for me. Because it says in his word. But maybe he's trying to take you through something to humble you. And he's not going to do what you want. Because he's going to bring you to your knees. 
And then it's the test, the third test that he had to undergo. And the third, third test is the test of power. Bow down before me and I will give you all of this. And how many people that preach the word have bowed down so that they could have the power because they want to be seen, because they want to be heard, because they want to be known. And what they don't understand is, yes, the gift operates and the gift is going to operate. But you see, what they don't understand, they've sold themselves for power. We don't need to be seen or heard or known. And the devil wants us to bow down. And this is why I say, Father, help me with these tests. Because it's not too difficult for these things to come in your life. For you to start thinking that it's about you. It's not about us. We have no power of our own. We have nothing. And just that little thought can be enough to make to puff you up to make you think that you're something when you are nothing you must understand we are a speck of dust the only power that we might have we don't have any power of our own because we are powerless in our flesh man the only thing in our flesh man is pride and arrogance and there's no power of our own and that is what you see a lot of what's going on in the world at the moment everybody trying to show their power if it's not a political power it's whichever way it is in this world man raises itself up to show their power they put their certificates on the wall of what they've achieved of their flesh. But at the end of the day, Father wants a humble person. That when he came and he said, I'll give you the kingdoms of this world because everything is under my rule. Look how arrogant the devil is. And he was not far off because the whole world is under the sway of the devil. Because unless we receive your sure, the rest of the people is under the sway of the devil. So the whole world is under the sway of the devil. The only time that you start counteracting the way the world is going is when you receive your hushua. The rest of mankind is really under the sway of the devil. And he would not bow to having the power. Because he said, if you bow to me now, I will give you all these kingdoms. You see, he didn't want, he knew. See, Yoshua knew the path that lay behind, before him. Now, he was giving him an easy way to get it, to say, you don't need to go through this difficult path. You don't need to go through this, this narrow path. You don't need to go through the, the stake. You don't need to go through the cross. Don't go through the cross. Go this path. It's just easy. I give you everything. You don't need to go the hard road. And how many times we don't want the narrow path, we don't want the hard road, we want to go, we want to climb into the kingdom through the back door. Well, I'm sorry, there's no going through the back door. You'll be chucked out. They will throw you out. You have to go in with the right attire for you to enter into the wedding feast. You have to wear the right garments. If you don't have the garments that you're supposed to have, and how are you going to obtain those garments? Those garments are given because of the righteous acts, because of what you've had to walk out. But you see, we don't want to go through anything. We just want to receive everything. He must just give me everything. But I want to go through nothing. Well, I'm sorry to say, in this world, for you to really enter the kingdom, it is a narrow road. And that narrow road is a road called the Thlipsis. And that is, comes with a lot of persecution. It's Thlipsis. It's persecution. It's hardship. It's trial. 
It's test that's going to come your way. But you see, for too long, we have had the wrong mindsets of our church mindset. I want to be able to receive everything, but I want to die to nothing. It doesn't work like that. That's the rain that's going to come against you. That's the floods that's going to come against you. That's the wind that's going to blow on you. That's going to beat on you. And that it's going to be able to want to make you fall. So you see, if we don't go through these tests, just yesterday I was listening to this prophet's testimony. And this is a mighty woman, a mighty prophet of the Father. And yesterday I was listening to her testimony and I was saying, my father, this woman has been through so much. She's now in her early 80s. And if you go listen to any man, great man or woman of Yahuwah, do you think it came easy? No, it did not. I, li- I listened the other day, something came up of my phone of Catherine Kuhlman. And how they were saying, how she struggled. The difficulties that she had to go through. She had this, people would come up against her. I mean, she, she raised up in a time when a woman wasn't even supposed to preach. And so she was up against a religious spirit constantly. And people that spoke against her and people that threw her out of places. In the beginning, it was very, very difficult for her. You see, we only see the end result. But we don't see what she had to go through in the beginning. Her hardships, her trials, her tests. And that's what you have to understand today. Because that is the beginning of everything. By the leading of the Ruach. When the Ruach starts to take over, he's going to take you through that, those, those trials and that tests. So that you can become a submitted and surrendered vessel. And that's why he says, and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them shall be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. I was speaking to someone yesterday, and this is exactly also a prophet of the Father, and she said to me, you know, and I tell you right now, I'm praying desperately for people and saying, Father, give them ears to hear and eyes to see. And I said, my sister, is that the word the Father is giving you? Open their ears and open their eyes. I said, because that's interesting. Because on Wednesday, when I had to pray over the people that were coming for the, to, to get food, that's the new thing the Father got me to pray over them. Father, open their spiritual eyes and open their spiritual ears that they may hear you, that they may see you. She says, but then again, Natalia, there are those that are the foolish virgins. They are foolish because their hearts are so callous and hard that they will not listen. That they will not listen. That they are so stubborn, hard-hearted, they will not bow. They are rebellious. And they will be the foolish virgins that will sit outside because they are in my kingdom. They are wanting to do everything to serve me, but they are rebellious because there's areas of their lives that they were not willing to submit and surrender. They will be the foolish virgins and that's why there's a separation coming. Not that it's coming, it's already here where the Father is separating Those foolish virgins that do not want to bow, surrender, submit, repent. If you don't repent, you are not going to go forward. You will stay stuck. Doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter all the things that you try and obtain, you will stay stuck. So they are the foolish ones who built their house on the sand. And the rain came down and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat on the house and it fell. And great was its fall. So you see, there's going to be a great falling away. That's the great falling away that is coming. Because why? They will have no foundation. Because the foundation that they have is built only on their religious doctrines. They puff themselves up to get more knowledge and more knowledge of the word. So they puff themselves up. They keep studying more of the word. 
but that yet at the end of the day don't put it into practice. What use is it for you to be all puffed up with the word? So many pastors, so many rabbis, so many dwemenies, so many preachers are so puffed up with word, but callous of heart, not willing to bow and repent and return to the Father and the truth of his word. They will know the truth. You know, and what amazes me is how many of them I will come around and say, his name is Yahushua. Yes, we know that. We studied it. I say to myself, I can't believe it. You studied it, but yet you will not put it into practice. You know that the Sabbath is on a, Shabbat is on a Saturday, but yet you will not put it into practice. So what is that? A rebellious? Rebellious? Callous. You don't want to change. So there is a shaking that's going to come. And there's going to be a falling away. And that is why in Hosea chapter 2, he says, I'm going to bring them into a wilderness. And in that wilderness, I'm going to contend with them. And I'm going to do away with their moon days and their Sabbath days and their holy festivals and their gatherings. I'm going to do away with it all. And I will contend with them. And I will take away their silver. I will take away their gold. And they will understand that they gave all of this to their lovers. And then I'm going to remove the name from their bowl, the bowl names from their lips. So that's why he says there will be a great fall. And that's what's coming ahead of us. A great falling away because of great deception that's coming upon the people. And it came to be that when Yeshua had ended these words that the people that were astonished at his teaching, but he says, and the rain came down and the floods came down and the winds blew and they beat on the house and it fell and great was its fall. And so who are those that are going to stand? Only those that are going to stand solid on the rock and they haven't built their house on sinking sand. We cannot build this house on doctrines of man. We have to build this house on a solid foundation. You know, when you have a word from the Father, when you have a word from the Father, then believe me when I say to you, it doesn't matter what comes up against you. You know, yesterday I had a friend of mine that I woke up yesterday morning, I had a dream. I don't dream much, but I had a dream. And in this dream, I was in Jerusalem and I went to visit this friend of mine and it was her birthday. And I was in this dream going to her. And in this dream I had to hug her and I had to tell her, fear not. Yahuwah is with you. Fear not. And I had to bring her a word. And there was another friend of mine that was with her that I had to give to say to her, do not fear. And they were in this fear because there had been a bomb that had gone off and this whole place had been demolished. There was a whole section that she took me to to be able to see. Look at this, Natalia, it's all gone. And I had to stand, hold her in my dream and say to her, do not fear. And what is interesting is that then yesterday, I couldn't wait to phone her because it was her birthday yesterday. And I wanted to say to her, this is the word that the Father has given me. I had a dream about you. And this is what I've got to say to you. And the word that the Father gave her that morning from the come away, my beloved, was exactly the same word about do not fear. I hold you. I keep you in the palm of my hand. I am the one who's gone before you. Exactly the same word. And that was the word that I had to release to her out of my mouth. And when I gave her the word, I had no idea what she was going through. But that is how the Father will work. And now when she has a word from the Father, nothing is going to move her. The storm is going to come. The wind is going to come. The rain is going to come. The Father has given me a word. The Father has confirmed the word and I'm going to stand on his word. So when the Father gives you a word, you stand on that word. 
You can't just go get a word out of your, out of the, suck it out of your thumb and then take a, take a word and then start standing on it. I'm talking about when the Father gives you a word. And when the Father gives you a word, the rain is going to come, the flood is going to come, everything what can come, you are going to stand. Because you stand solid on the rock. Because His word is the rock of the foundation that we stand on. Do you understand? You will not be moved. Not by what man says, not by what man does, not by what man is doing around you. Because you are not moved by man. You stand on the rock of his word. You stand on the rock who is the word, who is Messiah, Yahushua. And you will not be moved by what you see. A thousand will fall at your one side, ten thousand will fall at your other, but it shall not come near you nor your dwelling. Because the Father has given you the word. And then you can stand bold. As bold as a lion. Because he's the lion of the tribe of Judah that will roar over your life. Father truly this morning is preaching, or this afternoon is preaching his own message here. So let's go back to John chapter 16, which is where we were. Maybe we can get back onto the sermon that maybe I put together that the father had his own sermon he wants to preach so we were reading in John chapter 16 verse 3 and this they shall do to you because they did not know the father nor me but I have said these words to you so that when the hour comes there you go you see now it all starts to line up together so you see we went all there for him to be able to now solidify his message but I have said these words to you so that when the hour comes you remember that I told you them to you, you that I told them to you so you see when you have a word from him and when these things start happening around you you hold on to that word for dear life because that's the word that you will hold on to and these words, I did not say to you at the beginning, for I was with you. So believe me, he has given words over your life that you are to stand by. And when everything else around you is falling apart, stand on what he said. Don't be moved by what people say. Don't be moved by what people are, are speaking. But you stand by what he's told you. But now I go away to him who sent me and not one of you ask me where are you going but because I have said these words to you grief has filled your heart but I say the truth to you it is better for you that I go away for if I do not go away the helper see the ruach the helper shall not come to you at all but if I go, I shall send him to you. So you see, who has the Father sent us? The Ruach of Yahuwah. The Ruach of Yahuwah has been sent to us. And having come, he shall convict the world concerning sin. So you see, this is the problem. You see, when the Father speaks, then people get convicted. But you know what happens? Many times, instead of it being conviction, it comes as condemnation. Because the people, have, the person might have a rejection, might have a hurt, might have a pain. And so the word comes and it convicts. And instead of it convicting, you see, when it convicts, you are supposed to repent or you are supposed to change. But you know what happens? Instead of you hearing it with a conviction, as a conviction, you hear it as a condemnation. And then that is when people then become offended. <laughs> and instead of them dealing with the root of their own issue, they come into, because of the rejection or because of the pain or because of the hurt or because of whatever it is that is there, an unmet need or a wound or a whatever, someone can speak the word and instead of the word coming, and bringing conviction to a person, the person sees it as condemnation. 
And then instead of them being offended at their sin, that's the little verse, the little picture that the father gave me. It's amazing how the world has become so, they get so offended when someone corrects them and brings the truth. They become offended, but they're not offended at their sin. So we're not offended with our sin. We should be offended at our sin in our lives. That should offend us and lead us to repentance. But no, we get offended at somebody that's maybe trying to bring correction. And so immediately we get offended at that as opposed to becoming offended at the sin that is in our lives that we are to be able to correct. And this is where divisions come in and problems come in because at the end of the day, it's our own areas of hurt and pain. Some people can be 80 years old and still walking around with wounds of their childhood that has never, ever been healed. And then they become a bitter person. Because why? They've never ever healed. That child, that child that is there has never been healed. And now everybody around them becomes a problem. And it's not the people around them that are the problem. It's that child that is there that has never been healed. Because you've never allowed the Ruach of your word to go and heal deep wounds of rejection. So when you start to feel rejection, when you start to get upset and angry with somebody or whatever, you've got to look within yourself and say, okay, what is there? All right. What am I going through right now? This is my little area that I still need to deal with. Okay, Father, I see. I see right now that this is an area that I still haven't healed, that I still haven't, I still have an oozing wound that is still paining here that I need to be able to deal with. But you see, instead of us having to go back to ourselves when something comes and there's a scratchiness within me of something that somebody said and it's now hurt me or upset me, instead of me going back within myself and say, okay, there's a wound here, there's a root here, I'm getting offended, but it's because of what? What am I feeling? I'm feeling rejected, I'm feeling upset, I'm feeling whatever it is because there's a deeper wound. There's a root. And I need to go back to deal with that. And that's why we need the Ruach of Yahuwah to be able to show us these things, to say, what are you getting upset about? Why are you getting upset with the person? Why? What is going on in your heart? What's going on in your life? Let's look and see what's there that hasn't been dealt with. And so there could be things within us. Things go on around us sometimes to bring us to that place of where we can humble ourselves before the Father and say, okay, Father, maybe I need to look within myself and see what is there. What is there that I still maybe need to deal with that I haven't dealt with? What is there? And this is what we need to do. And so he says... But I say the truth to you, it is better for you that I go away so that I bring you. Having having come, he shall convict the the world concerning sin and concerning righteousness and concerning judgment. So you see, the Ruach of Yahuwah is going to confront sin. The Ruach of Yahuwah is going to confront righteousness. The Ruach of Yahuwah is going to to confront the judgments that need to come. Concerning sin. Why? Because they do not believe in me. So you see, if we do not believe in the Father, if we do not believe in Him, this is the problem that is there. So, if they don't really have a relationship with the Father, and if they don't really have this place of where they are filled with the Ruach of Yahuwah, How are they going to be able to deal with the sin of the root of their hearts? 
Concerning righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. So you must understand, the Father is going to judge everything that is going on in this world. And this whole world is under the sway of the one who is going to bring about the judgment. Because the Father, it's, he's going to have to judge the devil. And if people are going, ahead, going along with the things of the devil, they are going to be judged along with the devil. I still have many words to say to you, but you are not able to bear them now. But when he comes, the Ruach of truth, he shall guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but whatever he hears, he shall speak. And he shall announce to you what is to come. So you see, how do we know what is on the heart of the Father if we do not have the fullness of the Ruach? That's why we don't have the mind of the Father. You cannot have the mind of the Father if you're not filled with the fullness of the Ruach of Yahuwah. Those who are filled with the, the, the fullness of the Ruach of Yahuwah are not about their own mind and their own thoughts and their own little lives. You see, if a cup <coughs> is half full, if it's only half full with the Ruach of Yahuwah, depending on how much you are filled with the Ruach of Yahuwah, is going to be the dependent on how much of the flesh and how much is of the, the Ruach. So when you are more filled with the spirit of Yahuwah, then you only have a little bit of flesh. And then the flesh still comes up now and then. But when you are more filled with the Ruach of Yahuwah, you will be more led by the Ruach of Yahuwah. But if you only have a little bit of the infilling of the Ruach of Yahuwah, and that little bit of the infilling of the Ruach of Yahuwah is unfortunately how much you've surrendered your life to Him. That's the fullness of the infilling. How much are you surrendered to Him? Because if there's still a lot of your flesh on the throne, you are not fully filled with Him. So depending on to how much you are willing to surrender to Him, is how much of Him is within you. How much you allow Him to move you and lead you and guide you. And how much you are filled with Him. And so depending on that, if your cup is only a little bit full, then the rest of it is going to be filled with self. So you will find that you are more led by your flesh. You will make decisions according to your flesh. You will just impulse. You will just impulsively do. Because you just, this is it, you're just going to do. Because it's your flesh that's doing. But the word clearly says, those of the sons of Yahuwah are led by the Ruach of Yahuwah. And we will get into that eventually when I get there. To study that, what it means to be led by the Ruach of Yahuwah. Because they are the sons of Yahuwah. That's Romans chapter 8. Those are the true sons of Yahuwah. Not just because you call yourself a son. The true sons of Yahuwah are going to be led by his Ruach. So he says, He shall esteem me and he shall take of what is mine and announce it to you. And so the Ruach of Yahuwah is going to be able to announce to the people what's coming from the heart of the Father because the Ruach of Yahuwah is the Father's Ruach. They are one. All that the Father has is mine. And that is why I said what he takes from, why I said that he takes from what is mine and announces it to you. And, and a little while and you do not see me. And again, a little while you shall see me. Therefore, some of his taught ones said to one another, what is this that he says to us? A little while, and you do not see me. And again a little while, and you shall see me, because I'm going to the Father. So you see, sometimes the things of the Spirit don't always make, me, make sense to them. So he was saying to them, in a little while you're not going to see me. Why? He's going to be arrested, and then he's going to be killed, and then he's going to die. And in that little while he's not, they're not going to see him. And then he's going to be in the grave and then he's going to resurrect. 
and then they're going to see him again and then they're not going to see him again. So from verse 20 he says, Truly, truly I say to you that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and you shall be grieved, but your grief shall become joy. The woman has grief when she is in labor because her hour has come, but as the son But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the affliction for joy that a man was born into the world. So we will have affliction while we are in this world. But one of these days, when Yahushua comes, we will be spared of all the affliction of everything that we've had to endure. And then it will all be worth the while, because then we will go and rule with him. And you therefore have grief now, But I see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and no one takes your joy away from you. And in that day you shall ask me, none at all. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he shall give you. Until now you have asked naught in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, in order that your joy might be complete. These words I have spoken to you in figures of speech, but an hour is coming, when I shall no longer speak to you in the figures of speech, but I shall declare the Father plainly to you. Okay, there we go. This was volumes to me. Because who is being preached now? I shall declare the Father plainly to you. Then he was speaking in parables, and they didn't understand the Father, and they didn't know the Father's way. But now we are in the time that Messiah Yahushua speaks plainly to us for us to know the Father, for us to know the Father's way, for us to come back to the Father's ways, for us to be pleasing to the Father, for us to be able to know what is on the Father's heart. In that day, you shall ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself does love you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from Eloah. So how does the Father love anybody that does not love the Son? How can anybody be the child of the Father that does not accept the Son and love the Son? Let us not be led astray, beloveds. There are many in this world that will come as the anti-Messiah that will not accept the Son, that will not embrace the Son. But now, they are the ones leading astray a people that once believed in the Son, that are now being led astray by doctrines of demons to eventually deny the Son. Be aware of what is out there. Be aware of what is being playing out before you. Be aware so that you understand Who is the son of the father and who is not? Who are the children of the father and who are not? And so we see, he's taught one, said to him, see now. So he says to verse 28, I came forth from the father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the father. Verse 32 says, see, an hour is coming. And has now come that you are scattered, each to his own, and leave me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These words I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. So how are we going to have peace if we are not in him? Only in him will we have peace. True lasting peace. The more we have Messiah, the more we have peace. The more of his presence we have in our lives, the more peace we have. My peace I give to you, my peace I live with you, is what Yahushua says. Not as the world gives, because how can the world give you peace? But yet they will speak and say, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Be very careful. They speak in peace. They wanting to sign peace deals. And they will say peace. And when peace is what they speak, destruction will come. 
these words I've spoken to you that in you, in me, you might have peace. In the world, you have pressure. In the world, you will have this thlipsis. You will have, you will have hardships. You will have trials. But take courage. Take courage, beloveds. Take courage. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Take courage. He's already gone before you. Take courage in him. He's overcome the world. So what is there to fear? What is there to be moved by? As long as he holds you in the palm of his hand, that's all you need to worry about. That's all you need to do. You just need to stay focused on him. You just need to stay with him. He's the one who's going to lead. He's the one who's going to guide. He's the one that you will trust. Nothing and no one else. Man is not going to be able to do what only he can do. So I leave these words with you today. As This is as far as we will go. As we will continue next week. So he's given us his Ruach that goes before us, that will lead us and guide us. And that is why we are now in an hour where more than ever you cannot move, you cannot do unless you seek his face. You cannot move if you do not seek his face. How do you build if he doesn't build with you? How do you move if he doesn't move with you? That is a very dangerous place to be. If you move and he didn't move with you, that is a very dangerous place to be because it means you do not have his protection and it means you do not have the blessing that he's got to give you on what he's doing because the only blessing that you're going to have is in his moving. He blesses the work of what he's given you to do Not just he blesses the work of your hands. What work are you doing? Is it the work of his hands? So let us stay in this place of where we are totally and utterly submitted and submerged and surrendered. Yes, the trials and the tests. I don't know anybody right now that doesn't have some or other kind of trial or test coming their way. And all I can say to you is we are being tested. Yes, we are. And how are we going to do in our trial and our test? We are being tested and tried to prove faithful. The test and the trial is there so that we may prove faithful. Let us prove faithful in our trial and in our test. The storm is coming. The rain is coming. And it's going to beat against our house. We are the house. It's going to beat up against us. But who do we carry within our house? If the Ruach of Yahuwah and the fullness of Abba Yahuwah, Yahushua, is living within our house, how are we going to be moved? We're standing solid on the rock of Yahushua HaMashiach. And we've got Abba Yahuwah's very presence living within us, who is going to move us? No man will shake or move us in any way. Let us pray. Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you. I thank you for your word, Father. I thank you that we want to be those that have our feet solid on the rock, the rock of Yahushua. Father, I pray that you please forgive us of when, like the Israelites in the wilderness, we tend to complain and we tend to get upset because of the trials and the tests that we go through. Yet we do not understand that they are good for us. They are building character in us, is what your word is saying. It builds character. Which character? The character of Messiah, Yahushua. And everything in our lives is to be able to be submitted and surrendered to you, knowing that you alone are the one that allows whatever it is that comes in our way. And yes, the enemy will come in like a flood. He comes in like a flood. But you raise the standard against him. And the standard is that we can come forth 
walking out righteousness, walking out that we will stand righteous, that we will not fall play to sin, but that we will stand righteous before you and that we will have heads bowed low, bodies bowed low, that we may be able to bow low and repent before you. Father, that is why it is so critical in this hour that we come and that we allow you to come and heal our hearts of those areas there that are still on the throne of our lives, where we are on the throne of our own lives as opposed to being you on the throne of our lives. We are still ruling and controlling our own lives. And we still allow our emotions to control us or our thought patterns to control us or our will to control us as opposed to allowing your Ruach HaKodesh to control us. And so I pray, Father, let everything that is not of you shake out of us. Let your word come and bring correction and bring deliverance and bring healing. Your word is to bring healing to our lives. Your word has come to be able to set the captive free. Help us to be set free, my Father, from those things that so easily ensnare us and entangle us into being able to allow the enemy to come and bring destruction. And so, my Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you, Father, that we submit and surrender to you and allow you to come and have your way in us. We praise and we thank you for blessing Yahushua's name. Amen. Let us pray the ironic blessing. Yeverechecha, Yahuwa v'yishmerecha. Yair, Yahuwa panavelecha. V'yichunecha. Yesa, Yahuwa panavelecha. V'yasem lecha shalom. Yahuwa bless you and keep you. Yahuwa make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. He will lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. May his shalom be with you and may his face continue to shine upon you constantly. In Yahshua's name. Amen. <laughs>